Welcome back to the channel guys, just giving a sort of little introduction before we get right into the video. Uh, today is going to be kind of a elaboration of the Step Up Your Game series in a way, even though I've been doing mainly game types with those type of videos. Uh, we're basically going to do a sort of Know Your Map uh, series starting here today with Truth. Uh, probably the most well-known map in Halo history being Midship. So we're going to just try and, or I'm going to try and break down whatever I can, anything I know, um, whether it applies to the game type specifically, um, probably mainly just talking about map positioning, map callouts, what you want to be trying to play for in general. So this is definitely uh, a very basic type of video um, with me just kind of walking around doing a sort of slight introduction to these things that are very fundamental to the gameplay. So I hope you guys enjoy, hope this helps, and let me know what you think. Alright, welcome to the video guys. Uh, today, just kind of doing a breakdown of, starting the breakdown of maps. And today, I would say we're just starting with the most basic and most common map throughout pretty much all the Halos so far. I think this uh, midship really takes the cake for that title. And uh, I'm just going to try and maybe break down some callouts. I think that might just be the most basic thing. And um, some things will just kind of be doubled up like red and blue. Pretty much the same exact callouts. Um, but this is just sort of to give you guys a good understanding of if you don't know some callouts or maybe some things you need just a little extra clarification on. Um, so let's just jump into it. So this is in general just top red. This entire top of the base here. Um, usually I'd say this is... Uh, red clamber or toilet, probably just the the bowl shape, bottom toilet, maybe top toilet, but toilet clamber, whichever one. Just so you guys know, there can be a uh, a sort of mixing of the callouts between the two. I would say this is considered usually top glass, back glass, um, in the base. So whenever you hear that call, this is usually at the back of the base. Here you have the lift, bottom lift, top lift. That's one thing you will notice in Halo callouts in general. A lot of time is always like a top and bottom, or top or red one, red two, or things like of that nature. But usually a lot of top and bottom callouts. This is another like glass area, so maybe there's a bottom glass, a top glass. Um, but usually if you hear that call out and you hear like bottom of the base on the glass, like that's what this means right here. Or top of the base, top glass, back glass. Whenever you're talking about the top of the base, that's up here. Um, you just have bottom red. There, this is where there is a little bit of a mixing of callouts. People never really uh, had a great callout for these things. Whenever you're sitting behind this, people would just say in the center, behind the thing, or things of that nature. There probably could be a much better callout, uh, like behind the pillar or things of that nature. Usually this is like the corner, bottom red in the corner. You hear a lot of that, and that's somebody maybe sitting deep in this corner if uh, you're trying to push in through the front of the base can be kind of a hard angle to recognize right away so maybe you hear that call out this is like the bottom red in the corner kind of call out um, you have the pink tunnel red and blue pink tunnel leading to the pink street here you have the pink attic or otherwise known as the Eli red Eli so that's another mixing of call outs here I think Eli usually would indicate maybe this area here I think this is like the typical OG midship spot that always was here. This wasn't always here. This is just on truth. So this is like maybe top pink attic um, or under pink attic right here. So top pink attic, Eli, um, under pink attic. If you're pushing the base, you'd say there's a guy under pink attic. If you're coming in, you'd kind of check under here. Bottom car attic, top car attic, and uh, red window. I would say this is usually also like the red door, front red door. This would be like the doorway. This would be the window up here, missing my jump. This would be the top red window or just red window in general. You really don't need to say like top and bottom. This is just red window and this is the red doorway. Uh, front red is just the, this kind of general area. So you can say front red and then you have these, uh, these are usually called the pegs. So this is the pink side of the map. This is the red pink peg. This is the red car peg. So red car peg. Usually since you are blue or red team, you can kind of, uh, you don't really need to say red or blue sometimes, you just know, like if you're playing flag, you don't really need to indicate, you just say their car peg or just car peg, pink peg. And you want to try and keep your callouts as uh, clean and as minimalistic as possible, I'd say. 
Um, that's usually just the easiest way, rather than saying front red car peg or front red pink peg, and you're saying that all the time and having maybe two or three people saying that at the same time just really can jumble uh, the communication. So that's why you just hear like a red one, red two, or top red, bottom red, keeping it simple. And then uh, you can maybe get a little bit more specific if somebody is um, in some weird spots here. So you can say like red toilet, he's above red toilet, sitting in the corner, uh, like near pink door. Like you can get more specific if the situation calls for it, but try and keep it as uh, small as possible. As minimalistic as possible, like I said. Uh, so moving on out of the base, this is red pink door, obviously, moving out to the pink street. This, this just says red street, you could say red street, but I think it's just kind of ingrained in every Halo player's brain to just say pink, uh, because this is like the pink tower here. So you have red pink street. You have uh, red. You just have pink one. You can just say on camo, uh, camo pillar. He's. I don't. I'm trying to think of the call out maybe that uh, would really be right here. He's just kind of in the corner, I guess, like pink corner, bottom P1 corner. This is really the only corner here, so I think that's probably a legitimate call out because uh, there is no other corners in this vicinity. That's probably just something you can kind of uh, use in your call outs. Of course, you have blue P Street, or that's another thing too. So you have pink. You'll you'll hear a lot of P, or uh, yeah, you'll you're, you'll hear P rather than pink all the time. Just another shortening of the callouts, just to make it that much faster uh, whenever you're talking about it, making it simple. Walking up the pink street, blue pink street into P2. Uh, this is back P2. This is just the general P2 pink two area. Then you have pink face. I'm not sure exactly why it got the word face, but I, that's just what it is. This is the pink face area. Maybe this is like the pocket. Usually it'd be hard to kind of like differentiate. You could just say like pink face pocket and somebody would just check these corners if they happen to push this out. So pink two, back P2, you have the streets, you have the face, and then you have pink three. So it'd be uh, red side P3, blue side P3, and then just P3. I'm sure if somebody's standing up here, you don't need to be that specific. You can kind of just see him clear as day. Uh, jumping around, standing around, shooting uh, up top here. Uh, moving on, you still have just the general top mid, bottom mid area. This is probably, if somebody's standing out here, you would say like on the tack mag. Uh, bottom mid is just this sort of circular. You can kind of just see this circle around the front red and front blue area in this region. This is the bottom mid. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, this is like front pink one to be more specific rather than saying like pink one to bottom mid. This is like the front pink one area if they happen to be standing around this uh, this side of the pink one. And then you have bottom mid being more towards this area. You have the tack mag just sitting bottom mid. And then he's bottom mid jump up, jumping up the top mid. This, I guess, is probably like the bottom mid jump. This could even be like mid two, mid one, but nobody ever really got that specific. It's kind of weird how uh, <laughs> with Halo callouts, people kind of just, s they'll splice together a bunch of different callouts for the same thing. Um, but generally, bottom mid, uh, top mid jump up is like right here, and then top mid on the shields. So they could even say like red car shield. And that's like what this one is, red pink shield, blue pink shield, blue car shield. Um, usually in the franticness of these games, you'll just say he's top mid and he's on the shields. Especially if it's like a flag game, once again, you kind of get a general sense of like which side they're going to be on. If you're trapped in your base and someone says on the shields, the guy's probably not back here trying to push your base on the blue side. He's probably just going to be sitting on this side of the shield, so you'll hear a lot of general callouts like that uh, a lot of times. Uh, pink pegs, or car peg and pink peg, once again, blue callouts are just a mirror of red. Nothing else, just blue and red. And now moving over to the car side of the map, you have the car door moving into the car street. Or I, I guess this is more so like people say car door to mean this general vicinity right here. And then once people start to branch further out right about this point, you'll hear car cuts. I think that's usually the uh, general term is people say car cuts when they're kind of out in the open in this area. This is more so car door when they're a little bit closer. You have blue bubble, and like deep blue bubble or back blue bubble is probably deeper in this corner or hugging the wall back into blue bubble. Same with red side. Uh, top blue bubble, just kind of hovering around the top of the bubble here as normal. And then you have the slide. Now, slides and ramps, again, splicing and 
basically meaning the same thing, but getting similar callouts. You have the blue slide here, blue car slide, <laughs> and car two, red car slide. Um, same thing, red car cuts. Once once you start getting from down here, red car cuts into about car one. Red side car one is probably when you're down off of this uh, ramp here, and you're probably a little bit lower this side. Or people could say red car one, meaning even right here where you're inside car one. It's just this general like hugging this. Uh, actual car tower here is like the red side so you have car one this is just the general car one area blue and red side if you want to be more specific if you need to be and then uh, car lift bottom car lift car two lift um i think that about covers it for the call outs this is car three <laughs> i would say that's probably the last call out that comes to mind um let me just try and look around a little bit. The one thing that comes to mind as well that is kind of a unique callout is, uh, I don't know. This is one thing that probably will get miscalled out or people don't have the specific word in the heat of the moment. This is definitely something that should have had a more specific callout. But usually people will say like front, front red, like in the nerd spot or something like that. Usually if people don't have a specific callout for something that's kind of in a milk spot someone's just trying to play their live being kind of sneaky it's just like that's the nerd spot this is definitely kind of the the nerd spot on red and blue being on this position and there it's kind of funny there is also um let me see if i can even hit it i really never go for this but you can travel up all the way up this wall to get on top of here as well someone could just say on top of the map on top of the map above pink like on top of the base i think is probably the best way to put it and a lot of people at the higher level usually generally know what that means. This sort of spot right here, I think it became sort of uh, known as the frosty spot. It seems to be known as now. I think he used to be like one of the players that utilized it a lot is kind of hiding in this corner. It used to actually be a lot deeper. You should be able to go all the way in there. But now it's just a little bit, got a little bit of a buffer as you can see. You can't go all the way in, but... This is also still kind of the frosty spot, and this general area is still just like their side, P3. Um, just to give you that sort of uh, that sort of string of callouts for this general area. But frosty spot's kind of like that corner. I think that about does it for everything. I don't think I missed really anything else. There really isn't too much to a truth. It's very, very plain, very simplistic. Um, I think that's definitely actually is uh, what makes the map very great. So uh, let's move on. So let's start to talk uh, probably a little bit more game type specific. This applies even to Flag and Slayer in the like. You really want to be trying to play Pink Street here, uh, Slayer or Flag, getting to P3, getting to into P2, and staying here as long as you can, and getting as much presence in the rest of the map while still maintaining control this is sort of the focus first then you can work out top mid maybe have the last guy go car or bottom mid um, probably the best setup for uh, capture the flag this still applies to slayer but slayer with uh, varying spawns whether they're behind you in front of you to the side whatnot um, you're gonna have probably this setup with somebody pink to top mid Maybe somebody ling lingering in your base to push out through pink one or bottom mid, and then somebody working car or bottom mid on that side of the map as well. This is probably, I would consider, the meta of sorts. You can work car, but one thing to make note of um, with the spawns is coming off of car on this side of the map, it, it really is a lot more difficult to um, work your way back into the base whenever you're spawning deep in the bubble here. So on flag, for example, if somebody is pushing in, the other team is pushing in from your pink door, getting this cross shot here and then trying to push back out to challenge the flag, you have so many angles to get shot from. Just looking at them here, top mid, bottom mid, car one, car two. Usually you don't want to influence car two spawns on the bubble just to shoot people right away um, because that means that they can then, like, the enemy team will then spawn in their own base, which is not really what you want in a flag in particular. Um, but just as I was saying, spawning people bubble, forcing them to come back to their base, just allows them to probably have taken a couple shots just to get in here. And then if you have full control over pink, 
over uh, top mid and you happen to be collapsing in their base, you should already be ready for these guys coming back uh, to their door. But they kind of do need to come back because forcing people to push out from their bubble, if you know that they are, and you're top mid, you're pink too, maybe there's a guy car one, like I mentioned before, with that sort of uh, meta setup. These people having to push out have to do so much um, just to make do with the situation. Uh, you have a lot of opportunities to just kind of stay hidden car one or hug this wall and maybe fall back and wait for these guys to just push over you to try and get into your flag as you can kind of catch them off guard. Or um, being top mid, same thing. You kind of just have this angle already and you can just get a couple easy nades um, onto that their side on their spawn and just kind of have this free cover without having to take any damage you just get free information if people happen to push back you can get some shots um, if you happen to be on this shield you can kind of just you can usually see like the heads of people running by they really have no sneaky options whereas and they can't do it quickly in, a, in like a sort of stealth fashion but if you happen to be pushing car uh, a lot of times and you have like pin control and you have top mid but you're putting a heavy focus on car. These people can just spawn out Pink Street, instantly turn in, and they're back in their base. So as you'll notice, that sort of instant time frame of spawning out Pink Street, instantly turn away, and thrust back, or sprint back, or get into the Pink Attic here, is just a matter of turn and thrust, which is just a, a second, two seconds. But the less favorable car bubble spawn is you spawn back bubble. They could already be seeing you from their Pink Door, from their Pink Attic, from the car door poking out. And then you still have to sprint, thrust, get back in, hopefully as quickly as you can. But if you take damage even, you get staggered, you're just sitting on the car door, maybe trying to nade out, I wish I had a frag here, but trying to nade out that lift, watching if they challenge from that uh, that toilet, that clamber call out, like I mentioned earlier. Um, or you just push straight in while weak. It, it's usually so much more favorable to have them trapped in that car area of the map. That's just what makes it that much easier to apply that pressure, that consistent pressure. And that's not to say that they can't, uh, teams can't break out car or push back into their base and break a setup. It's never just like an impenetrable force. It's just that extra advantage, uh, that passive advantage. Even combos here, I forgot to mention that. But there is literally nothing on this map except a camo, which only comes up every two minutes to maybe make a play. Um, and have that sort of natural advantage. So you need the positioning. It's really just a raw who can take the least amount of damage and deal the most damage and have the best positions to follow through on uh, the enemy's base. So this is more so, I'm talking specifically flag, but the same applies to a slayer. So that's just the, the quick rundown of probably the meta, I'd say, for CTF on Truth. Now let's talk a little bit more about slayer. Um, it's still very much a uh, pink top mid like base favored positioning. You really want to try and force people bubbles. Same thing applies because if you have, this is like the meta setup that I know my team used to use a lot. And you'll see a lot of other top tier teams do a similar thing. They have so many P2 or just higher up in the pink area of the map. They probably have a guy sitting on a pink door, blue, maybe even red here. And so that's three out of the four. And then the fourth guy may be lingering, helping somebody blue, helping somebody red. Could be top mid, could be bottom mid, wherever. And then just having them spawn bubbles, you get all the information you want about where they're going. Once again, it's very clear about where they're going because they have to just move somewhere or else they're probably going to get pushed out. Because if teams just sit here and bubble and they don't really move, which is all they really can do, that's probably one of the typical favorites, I'd say, to sort of stagger the other team's uh, pressure they're applying, is to just kind of wait and bubble. And allowing yourself to just walk out here into the enemy team's just line of sight, it makes it that much easier for them to just get a couple shots, back you down, and then if there happens to even be, say I'm like the one man... Uh, holding down red, and I see three people here. I can instantly just run back to P2, my teammate P2. We swap out, and now we know they're three stuck in red. So it's not even that uh, car is impossible in Slayers. It's really far from it. Car still allows you to have a wide range to uh, push out from. However, it's very, it's just so much easier to allow yourself to get that free information. Information is really everything at the highest level. 
because even if there's three people here, you're not winning a a one v three. Like that's just not gonna happen unless you somehow have a combo. You have prenades already on the car door. You get two people one shot, and clean them up, and that's great. Um, that's one thing I will just make a quick tangent on to say is that that is the benefit of having these setups is that you can have uh, you can have some nades ready with the idea that okay you hear a call out from a P2 guy maybe he's pink three he's just watching over the car side of the map he sees that two guys just uh, thrust slide from blue blue car to red car and he can let you know on the red car door or pink door here hey they're three pushing red you can just maybe just start chucking some nades keep them staggered a little bit you want to try and buy yourself some time to uh, back up maybe you get some people weak and then these guys at blue base who had uh, just like the sort of flank ready they can push out they can maybe flank behind or just get to you from the uh, their P Street down to pink one here on your pink or even top mid I'd say and then everyone can just kind of play their lives work the car door work the top red uh, angles and hopefully get that team shot involved that's really what you want to do uh, to just have that sort of crossfire and that will result in probably the most success for a slayer now that's not to say pushing out through car or going car is like a no man's land or you can't ever use it I'd say it's still very much the opposite um, a lot of times you'll find yourself with the general setup you have a teammate p2 maybe a guy pink one maybe top mid and having a guy sitting in a base as well is always uh, a safe bet to have like an angle just to kind of play off of every teammate have a lot of angles and then you can push out through car maybe to collapse through and just kind of play your life here or even go car two. You have so many options still at car if they happen to be trapped in a base. So it's like I'm, I'm going from the ideal. The ideal is to have each pink side controlled. You have a guy maybe pink two, maybe top mid. Um, you force them out car and then you can kind of work your way through behind them on car side or let them push in through a base and then they're just trapped in a base. Having the people trapped in any corner, it doesn't matter, even if it was, uh, let's say, they happen to all four on blue team be here on Red Eli. If you know that as a team and you have full control on car 2, top mid, P2, and you have like a fourth guy maybe in blue base, that's fine as well. If you know there's three people here, that's even worse, or that's still a worse case scenario for uh, the enemy team. You want to have that sort of spread, that diversity in your positioning. Uh, you don't want to spread yourself too thin, but you still need some uh, detachment from each other so that these sort of moments don't happen. Being trapped in bubble is probably um, the worst. Being trapped just in a base in general is just as bad. Same with Pink Street. Um, but it's just the hardest areas to fight from. That doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means it's that much harder. Being trapped in bubble, you can just kind of chuck a couple nades. You can have a guy pushing car 2, a guy pushing up the slide, you can have people just pushing in from the car door and just chucking all their nades and everyone just kind of poking at the same time. If there happen to be three or four people stuck in one bubble, uh, that's just bad news for that team. It's so easy to just uh, have them pushed into a corner. Now, can the team still outplay them? That's still very possible, but it's, it's a numbers game when it comes to Halo with a lot of these positions and the probability of you and your team making out uh, with a 4-0 or 3-0 is just higher with, with certain situations uh, when it's a 4v4 and everybody's up on the map. So now that I've kind of broken down the map just on the callouts, on maybe the sort of the meta, uh, I guess you can say for playing the maps on the game types, on the specific game types, I'm going to kind of just show you some... Uh, little extra tidbits so if you happen to make it through to the end of this video I appreciate you I hope you enjoy just maybe seeing how to, to do some of these things um, and I may mess up but uh, just bear with me so one extra little thing that a lot of people don't utilize a lot is maybe just jumping up clambering up to this window you don't even need to spring jump as such if you spring jump you notice like I can make it all the way up but I don't even need to do that I can just jump hold crouch look right up at it and that's kind of like right on this line, kind of like right below it. If you just stand and look forward, you'll be able to make it anyway. Um, a similar thing with the toilet here. I think you can make it up. It's kind of maybe a little bit worse in the toilet than is the lift, but uh, you can still make it. As long as you're sort of in the center area, you don't even need to walk up this or stabilize or spring jump. You can just hold crouch, look up at this sort of angle right here, and easily jump up. You can be right under it as well. I can hug, hug this wall 
and just clamber right on up. One thing as well, I tried this earlier. Uh, there's also a thrust slide or thrust into the wall up Pink Street. Try and make it up there. I might just for the sake of time, it might take me way too many tries to get up here. Um, but you can make it from Pink One to P3 with a correctly timed thrust. And the same thing goes for up here as well. There we go. Kind of showing it off a little bit. You can kind of keep holding clamber as well, so that's... Okay, I messed up there. But you can clamber that wall, even though it doesn't look like you can, a couple times. Uh, now on this side of the map, car 1. You can jump up from car 1 off of this wall right here. In that sort of angle, and just instantly jump up to car 2. Same thing, if you're not on this side, you can be on this side and kind of jump right into this crevice. Jump back up. Clamber up into car 2. Uh, one thing that I did find out, actually... Quite a while ago. Let me see if I can do it. You can clamber on this edge right here. And you can jump further out and clamber sort of on the outside of this car 3 region. Which, it's not always the easiest, but I'm pretty certain I can... There we go. Just kind of right here out in the open. If I can clamber infinitely here. Just kind of on this area and get the jump on uh, the guys at car. And maybe extend my life just a little bit longer. So this is probably the most known one that a lot of people don't really get to utilize. You can actually uh, jump up this wall, make it in the car. You don't even need to use your thrust. But you can clamber up just sort of along this corner here of this. Make it into the car attic. Just get in the base pretty easily. Something useful angle with camo is probably just sort of hugging this wall if I can actually jump up here struggling right now but you can walk along this sort of wall right here just sort of a nerdy angle just have like that sort of off angle that people might not expect especially if you have a camo this is definitely a very useful spot to be in one more actually that I just remembered is um, you can make it up from these pegs up to top mid you can clamber on that. I think you can actually make it up here as well. If you sprint and stabilize, you can make it up. Um, I'm not too sure about stabilizing up to here. You might have to spring jump. You might just have to spring jump. Like so. Let's see if I can do it. Hit it. First try. There we go. And you can clamber up from the pegs up to here with a well-timed spring jump. Same thing as well. Jumping up from this window, as I said before, with a sort of crouch. Just... All that is is a crouch. Is you can do the same thing here with this clamber to the top mid jump up. You can stand right below it. You can just walk right under it. Clamber up. I do this a lot where I walk through, spin around, jump up right away. And all that is is just a crouch jump, a well-timed crouch jump, and clamber to get the top mid. So a lot of what I'm showing you is definitely very uh, useful, very um, active jumps and skill jumps that you can pull off. Um, just to sort of cut down the time, cut down on the um, exposure on the radar and whatnot, and catch people off guard. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of breakdown. I think I'm going to pretty much do this for every single HCS map, or every single HCS map um, that's at least been in play. So, even if, like, Fathom, for example, is in these Pro Series tournaments currently, I I'll still break it down. Um, just to give you guys the uh, the know on what you can play and how uh, uh, you can introduce these callouts if you have not already or be just more aware about how to better play these maps. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, let me know what you think. I, I think there's a bunch of useful information just uh, throughout. Um, so let me know if that is true, if you guys found this pretty helpful. I uh, will see you guys the next time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.